Um, so we'll get started and, and um, while you guys are, um, are working on this little poll, I wanted to give a couple of uh, minor updates before we get into the substantive discussion stuff. Um, I wanted to say that we have the um, uh, membership of the group ha has expanded. We have 23 um, group members as well as a number of individuals and the groups range from unaffiliated um, individuals all the way to like uh, Wegmans joined in Sentara and um, a number of nonprofits, local groups, um, government agencies. So that's super exciting. Um, my question for you all is this, a number of people have said, you know, it, it would be really interesting and maybe helpful for recruitment if our um, informational webpage said the groups that are in, you know, who is in this group. And I'm wondering if any of you would have any objections to having your, uh, the name of your group included in the um, informational webpage. I'm gonna share that webpage that I'm talking about in the chat, although you all have seen it before. It seemed like a good idea, but I don't wanna do it without your permission. So um, let me know um, if you have object, uh, objections, you could DM me or send me an email or, or whatever, and nobody needs to know. If, you know, if people are not into it, I won't do it, but seems like it could be good. Um, all right, so um, folks finish up with the poll if you haven't done it already. And um, then we're gonna move on actually to another item which will also include a poll. Um, so I'll, I'll let that sit there for just a second. And, and so the next item that, that is on the agenda um, is that uh, the planning goes forward with the Active Mobility Summit. I have interviewed um, and received proposals from three facilitators. Any of them would be a home run for us. Um, I'm waiting on a proposal from a fourth facilitator who would also be a home run for us. So, so we're doing great. I hope to have a, um, select that um, facilitator uh, this week, um, next week at the latest, and um, have them available to come to our next um, our next meeting um, and and get to know you guys a little bit. Um, uh, in talking to a number of partners, including the, um, the facilitators themselves. A couple of people have said that there's really nothing to lose and a lot to gain by moving the summit from January to February. Um, this again, seemed like a good idea to me, but um, I, I, I wanted to see if you all had any strong objections to doing this summit and um, Uh, February instead of January. Sort of what I've been telling people is that um, we want to do it as soon as possible. We want to allow time to do good planning, um, but very significantly because the summit, I, I should back up and even say what the summit is for. Um, uh, so the, um, the purpose of the summit is for us and other people who are interested in connectivity and active mobility and trails and greenways and all the stuff that we're working on um, to uh, develop a, a shared work plan. And we would do that by taking all the ideas that we brainstormed in the past, like areas where we could really um, do a lot more by working together and refine them down to uh, a maybe half dozen or eight topics 
and then developing small teams to go work on those topics and get to work and deliver some kind of measurable, even if it's small, but measurable result in the next year. That's why we'll have a um, facilitator to help with that. Um, so um, also when we're thinking about timing, if, if we develop this work list in, in the winter, a, a number of the, the topics might be actual physical on-site work, like maintenance is sure to be one of the, uh, is sure to be one of the topics. And so having nice weather will be really helpful. We don't wanna come up with our work plan in July and only have like two months to actually execute um, some of the stuff. Um, but I, I think February still allows us plenty of time for that. Okay, I'm gonna share um, just quickly results from this poll so you can see them, but you're gonna see them again later. Um, they'll be included in the exercise um, that we go through. Um, next, I wanted to ask you guys a few questions um, also through polling. Um, see if I, if I can figure it out. Um, I wanna figure out like what the format of the meeting should be. Um, we have a couple of different options. We could either, Um, hold on. Um, we, we could either just have this facilitated discussion, which would be something like, um, would take like three hours to do, or we could combine that with a, um, inspirational speaker, uh, which would make the meeting more inspirational, but it would turn it into like a five to six hour meeting and that was the original concept but um i'm not so, so sure it would work um uh it would uh work that great with zoom so um i wanted to to let you guys help me decide should should this be like just a business meeting, a combined business and inspiration meeting, or would you like to decouple the inspiration and the business, like have a, a different night or a different week or whatever? So um, I did another, started another poll that asks that question. And then also um, like what time frame could make sense for you guys? And um, uh, finally, a question about whether we should have food and, and we'll get more into that in a second. So um, hopefully you guys can see that that poll. Um, take, a, take a quick minute and, and respond if you don't mind. So um, this, this meeting is, is a meeting of equals. Everybody is always free to just pipe in all the time. And, and if you get out of hand, we could always mute you. So um, <laughs> feel free to, um, to uh, share thoughts. Um, first on, on the, the um, idea of like whether the short version or the longer version would be more desirable to you. Um, this is Amanda. I'll go ahead and share my thoughts. Um, 
I feel like while I like the longer version and the inspirational aspect of that, I worry that a five to six hour long all in one sitting would be way too overwhelming for, for folks. Um, that's a really long time to be on zoom. I would like to see it broken up over multiple days, I think. Thank you, Amanda. Any, any other, um, any other thoughts? Yeah, I agree with Amanda, Dave Redding. Yeah, thanks, Dave. And and the, the poll is also kind of pointing in that same direction. So so let's um so we'll we'll plan to just um go with it as as a single business, you know, meeting. We'll um really focus on developing that work plan and um and have the speaker be either the night before or a week before or a month before. That's sort of what the um what the poll is indicating. Um, uh, also, uh, so um, uh, one of the folks I was talking to that was helping me imagine this, um, you guys know him, Jason Espy, he, he does this a lot and he said it's actually possible to have food at a virtual summit, but it, it has to be quite different. Like you have to either develop it or you have like lunch bags that people pick up or snack packs. Um, the third question that I had asked in the poll kind of, um, oh, and so I, um, I approached Wegmans about that right away after I talked to Jason. I was like, hey Wegmans, um, you guys have always um, said you'd help us with our events. What about a, um, a virtual event? And they said they, they can, um, they, they can help us get food, but obviously like delivering or, and getting it to decentralized people is our issue. Um, um, so I was asking in the poll if, if folks thought it would help get people here or to the meeting if we had like a snack or if it, you know, kicked it up a notch. Um, it seems like, yeah, kind of maybe, not not decisive. Um, is anyone in the room like excited about the idea? Because um, for it to work, people are going to have to be excited because it's it's going to be some labor. I feel like the beauty of coronavirus is that you don't have to give people food because everyone's like near their kitchens and like, it's great. You're so close to your kitchen. You can have whatever you want, whenever you want it. And I don't know, take it as like a positive. Like you don't have, we don't have to recreate everything that we have when it's not coronavirus and like, let's take advantage of the things that we can sort of, you know, shake. <laughs> um. Thanks, Emily. And right as you started to to talk, I I was I thought you were going to say you don't have to worry about people's many and varied preferences and requirements for food. And I hadn't even thought of that. Um, so yeah, that that could actually go badly if you do it the wrong way. I hadn't even thought of that. So um, thank you for that. That that's super helpful. <laughs> um, Okay, so um, here are the results of that, that poll. Um, and then uh, lastly, um, I wanted to just invite people to um, sign up to uh, help uh, plan the summit via the chat. Like many of you are already pre-signed up for that. So if you're already on the planning committee, don't worry about it. We've got your email. Um, probably we will reconvene um, either mid-November or at the end of November. So that was fun. Um, 
Okay, so the next topic I wanted to do is to finally move toward having a name for the group rather than me um, using a, a different name for it every single time because we don't have a voted on name. Um, and we've been talking, again, we've been talking about this for quite a while and we've got um, uh, a lot of good suggestions in the hopper. We've, we've done a bunch of polling and now we're going to um, come up with a list of semifinalists that will have another round of polling and uh, vote on them at the next meeting. I've created a little um, worksheet that we're going to divide into small groups and work through the worksheet. Um, I'm gonna um, share my screen to show that to you. Um, Uh, let's see here. Whoops. Okay, so um, are you guys seeing the screen that says coalition name storming exercise? Hopefully. Yep. Okay. So so this this would be like me doing a presentation, but um you guys will go through it in your small group. It it talks through the, the purpose of what we're doing, um, outlines our approach. We're um we're gonna think about um our geography, we're gonna think about um what is the work that we're doing. Um and for each of these you'll you'll come up with um you know, what your group comes up with, two, maybe two choices for each one, what type of entity we are, again, giving your, um, your top choices. Um, then, then we'll put it together. And here are some, uh, I listed out some of the, um, the full names that people have suggested. And at the end of the um, small groups, which will be after uh, 10 minutes, let's say. Um, put your um, top two choices for each group, and then we'll come back and discuss it as a group. Um, does that exercise make sense to everybody? Is everyone okay with going into a small group? Looks like we'll have about uh, five people per group. Um, each group, please, um, uh, you can figure out however you want to do the secretarial task. I figured each group would appoint a secretary, um, but you can do it however you want. Um, and so it's 423 right now. Let's plan for the groups to be done no later than 435. And um, it, if that's too much time, then feel free to just leave the room. And if all the rooms are empty, um, we'll just go on. So, and uh, Michael and I will circulate between the groups and Rex too to um, see how it's going. Good luck. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Uh, that probably wasn't enough time, but I, I was a bit horrified that like people get bored and, and be marooned and say like, oh my God, I hate these Zoom small groups. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, let's just go group by group and um, hear your thoughts back. And then as a group, we will um, uh, decide where to go with it. Group number one, who's your secretary and, and what did you guys come up with? I can tell what we did. Um, we had a lot of conversations around um, not liking to, or like we, li we liked a more general term than the Charlottesville Albemarle. Um, so we like Central Virginia or Piedmont or Vanna, like a more general term. Uh, and we also liked the words active and community and mobility. Mm -hmm. We did not decide on our top two. 
Okay. Those in our notes. Um, great. And, and I said this to some of the groups, but not all of them. It's okay for any of those fields to be blank, right? So the geography was hard oh, for all of us. Call me if you need me. Maybe we don't need the geography. Um, okay, uh, group two. Uh, so we felt that the, the word mobility captured the goals of the group best. We didn't want anything too narrow, like trails or transportation, but something that encapsulated all of those things. Um, we did like the, the regional label of Charlottesville Albemarle um, because it, it brings this idea of connectivity um, forward. And then our favorite um, group name was um, an alliance. So we selected two that reflect that. Okay. Awesome. And uh, those two uh, were, uh, both those names that you guys typed in were names that were actually nominated before. So it's interesting to see that logic carry through. How about group number three? So for the geography portion, we um, all kind of agreed that we didn't necessarily feel that a political geographical term should be used. We liked Ravana or something similar. We weren't exactly sure which geographical name would be best there, but Ravana is kind of where we ended up for now. Um, we also like connected communities, but we didn't think that that was specific enough. Um, we didn't come to a specific modifier to put in front of it, but sort of like group one, we had that idea as well. Um, and we kind of, we barely got to entity and alliance was where we okay. got there. Okay. Group number four. We were not as organized as the rest of you. It was <laughs> Free-flowing, I would describe. We were very creative. That's fine. That's good. Creativity. I read the no, last no container. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, why don't you start with where we ended? <laughs> All right. So we had two, two, we had two names. One was being cut off as we were leaving, so I went ahead and oh. wrote that down. Um, so we have walk, bike, Blue Ridge, but then there was also at the last second walk, bike, ride, Blue Ridge. And that does interesting things to, like, the acronym then. That's WBRBR then. That's all. Okay. I also kind of like, I mean, as we were discussing, no one brought up Ravana, but I kind of like that since the watershed is so specific. So even like walk, bike, ride, Ravana, WBRR could be fun. You yeah. guys are all about the acronym. It's important. It really is because we live in, I don't know, other place. I mean, Charlottesville in particular tends to go back to this being the acronyms. You know, does everyone here know what BRAC is? Well, it's the Blue Ridge Apartment Council, but that's where you go to look for a house. Yeah, everyone knows to go to BRAC, but no one knows what it means. So um, the, the reason I, I, uh, I did this exercise is because precisely because of the acronym thing. It was like people were making nominations based on the acronym. And, and uh, of course, you have to be able to name an entity to know about the entity, right? So having a, a free flowing, like snappy thing is smart. Um, so um, so my, my thought for this was to develop a list of um, semi-finalists that we could deliberate about at the next meeting. Um, how, how would you like to, um, uh, to generate these um, uh, nominees. We've got like, um, uh, we've got like Connected Communities Coalition, we've got, you know, the CAM and we've got CAMA. Um, I, I jotted down um, Active Community Mobility Um, 
uh, Rivena Connected Communities Alliance, and, and now these the stuff I'm typing is detached from the groups that came up with it. Um, we got white walked bike ride. Walk bike. Uh, ride Blue Ridge, right? Did I get that right? Um, and also walk bike ride Rivana. Um, so, so what do you, some beside, someone besides me speak? Laura just threw something in the chat, which I also like. Group one came up with Mac Mobile Active Connected Communities. It's not geographically specific, but I, I like the idea of the Mac. Yeah. I think, that's I think, exactly, yeah, that's, is, yeah, that's exactly part. what we came up with. Mobile active connective communities, Mac. That's exactly what we came up with. Well, I'm stealing an idea from the chat, so that might it might be you who came up with it. <laughs> that was that was group one. That was group yeah. one. We could go with Mark and stick a Ravana in there. Mobile active Ravana communities. <laughs> um. Okay. There's also the possibility of throwing a you know a regional descriptor in front of like that, like you know Blue Ridge. Mac or uh, Rivana Mac or Piedmont Mac. Yeah, I, I like that too. And um, that was one of the ways I was thinking we get around the, for example, the Charlottesville Albemarle being such a tongue twister. It would be um, something that we barely ever use, right? That like when we're talking colloquially, we'd say like, we're from, we're from the mobile active, you know, we're from Mac. But if we're in Hampton Roads talking about our work, then we'd be like, oh, we're the R Albemarle Charlottesville Mac or whatever. Um, well, actually, I think R Mac or P Mac or any any of the the like geographical stick before the Mac is sort of cute. The A Mac. Okay. This is good. Any other? Uh, any other sort of process thoughts? Um, uh, one one thing that I could do is I could um, we could go back to the that Google Doc that has the monster like three page list and put a, a set of semifinalists on and we can work on it electronically and uh, between now and our next meeting um, come up with with like a, a smaller list that we can then discuss. Like we could be like Mac, no way, that sounds like a computer. We're not gonna do that. Or, you know, Kama, that's my aunt's name and I hated her and I could never have something named after her. Um, but yeah, so then further deliberation. So the, the one bugaboo we thought of with the Ravana name is that the watershed doesn't include Scottsville. True. How many people actually know it's that? Just, just to point it out. Well, if you live in Scottsville, you do. <laughs> and they, they have, so. Um, and actually the town of Scottsville is a member of the, um, is a member of the Alliance. Um, <laughs> but but we can hash that stuff out. Let's come up with like eight eight semifinalists and hash it out later. Um, so um, so what we'll do is, is I'll type these up into a coherent list, put them back in that Google Doc, and share it out, and we'll have further discussion at the, the next um, meeting. Um, speaking of the next meeting. Um, I wanted to uh, ask you guys, normally we have these meetings every two months, 
but that puts us at the end of December if we did one two months from now and that's probably not going to work like the last week of December is not a good week for us to do it would you all prefer to um uh to have our next meeting at the um like earlier in December or would you prefer to wait till January I'm going to have another poll about that launching right now. By the way, hey Tim, good to see you. Be sure to sign yourself in in the chat, folks that have not already done so. Um, and by the way, speaking of the chat, um, I'd meant to let you guys know what organizations are in the Alliance so far, and so I put them in the chat. There are too many of them to, to read them off. Um, we're sort of 50-50 on, on this. Um, uh, Why don't, why don't we do this? Why don't we um, uh, have the meeting in January, but we'll have a meeting that is specific for the summit that's optional that we do in January. Um, Did you mean December? Uh, sorry, the yes. <laughs> Do the one in January and do the other in January. Yes, thank you, Amanda. Um, and Amanda is the muse of the summit, as you can tell. Um, so, so what I'm suggesting is a, an optional meeting in December. We won't have any voting matters, except we will plan on the summit. And then we'll meet a, again in January. Early January is the big group, and we'll continue this name discussion then when we have more of a quorum. Does that approach work? Okay. Um, thank you. So, so that's the um, the agenda that I had for the meeting so far. Now, Heather Barr is going to join us at five fifteen. Um, I um, left time in between for a round room update slash break taking. Um, we had a long session of updates last time. So um, uh, folks should not feel obligated to share updates, but if you um, feel inspired to share what your group is up to, that is of interest to the, the collective, this is your time to do so. Also, please feel empowered to run to the restroom or get a drink of water. I recognize it's been an hour. This is Chris Genzik. Uh, we took a group of preschool and elementary kids out on the new Hayward property next to Ragged today, and we saw worms racing and mossy trees and rocks and waterfalls on all the new trails we've built up there. Um, it's nice to see the next generation is really excited about it. And we're going to draw thank you cards to Mrs. Hayward, who helped donate the land, and the USDA that wrote the grant. So the whole goal of that was to get kids out on trails, and we did that today, and they really loved it. And it was so much better than uh, budget meetings. It really made my Monday really awesome to see how people love trails in this area. That's cool. Who else? Any, any other? Um, uh, how about how about you? Um, how about you, Bobby? Were were you even at the last meeting? What what's um, what's happening what's in your world? I was not at the last meeting. I think Eric Magrum 
was there and in in and out some which i'm kind of right now because i'm still at work but um oh my gosh i mean canvix I, I think canvix is as strong right now as it's ever been i mean it's definitely grown since i've been in it five or six years just to just really um advocating advocating for um just trail upkeep works a lot with I hear chris talking we work a lot with um with them and just uh, keeping trails going. We're excited about the Biscuit Run project. We've been doing a lot of work out at uh, Ragged Mountain. Um, John Lewis, you know, our president, he's really big with the Vernavanda Trail Foundation as well. And uh, he's just, he's been a great, uh, just, there's a couple of people on that board that are just really super good at interacting with uh, other groups and, um, and the city and the county. Dave, John, Sam, Limbaum. Um, so I think, uh, you know, we're really ready to, to power up and help get on, you know, any of this stuff that needs attention from, especially volunteer. We can get a pretty good volunteer core together pretty quick. Awesome, thank you. And speaking of work at Ragged Mountain and um, lots of volunteers, um, Laura, uh, Laura's from the Trail Runners, and we're super excited to have them actively participating. Um, what, what do you guys have going on now? Yeah, so um, just kind of going off what Bobby said, you know, Cambic has a really strong volunteer presence, um, and, you know, we kind of work off of them. Um, one of our goals is to kind of beef up our um, our trail work and our volunteer base, but um, we really have a big presence in terms of events. And so there was obviously a huge impact. We were hit pretty hard over the summer in having to cancel our summer trail series. Um, this past weekend would have been our fall festival where we put on um, a, a marathon and half marathon distances, uh, usually hosted by Miller School. Um, so as you know, as sort of the stigma is going away, we're getting back into hosting some group runs. We had a really successful group run um, this past weekend. Um, so just getting people back out there, giving them opportunities to um, explore trails that you know maybe they're less familiar with. Um, so that's that's you know something that we're really big on is um, you know introducing people to new trails, uh, showing them where they can access those trails. So. Hopefully things will continue to trend uh, in a positive direction and we'll be able to continue to host lots of group runs um, into next year and then uh, pick up with, with our kind of regular event schedule um, in the spring and summer. Awesome. And um, actually the, that work that um, you all are, were doing plus um, Chris Ginsick plus Rex and securing the land plus Ragged Mountain is, is a Ragged Mountain running shop uh, up on the new land and next to the Ragged Mountain Reservoir is, is kind of like a, a shining example of what we're talking about. The trail runners and mountain bikers, a, a running shop, uh, city staff, tons of volunteers, um, a large nonprofit organization, Rivanna Trails Foundation, that their contribution um, was, was um, decisive, really. They're the ones that, um, Rex, can you maybe explain the, the nuance of how um, the Rivanna Trails Foundation was key for making um, uh, make, make an A-word happen. Yeah, so they've been particularly helpful with the, um, with actually the, the, the Trails Foundation has been helpful with the follow-on um, acquisition, which is the five acres that's sort of in progress. And um, so they really stepped up to the plate as an intermediary to help secure the acquisition of that project. And um, Chris Ginsick is using the leftover money from the Hayward acquisition to put towards that, plus some funding that um, we all worked cooperatively to help get from um, the Virginia Outdoors Foundation. And then they're gonna be using um, funds from the trail runners and Canbec to help build trails. 
So it was a it was a pretty cool um, sort of multi party project with the city and PEC kind of playing quarterback and RTF stepping up to the plate on the transaction and money from the Virginia Outdoors Foundation, money from um, from the uh, community forestry grant at USDA, and then some local money from those two trail organizations that are helping build trails. So it's, you know, I think a, a really neat way to see everybody kind of coming together to make this transaction work. And everybody was super enthusiastic about making it work. Thank you. Um, I, Diana, are you, um, do you feel comfortable talking about um, what the Move to Health Coalition is doing and this kind of surprising um, result where two of our four work groups have turned out to be all about outdoor activity and access to outdoor spaces? Yeah, I can talk about it. Um, and I, you can fill in with anything that you want to. Does that sound good? Um, so Move to Health Equity is a coalition that um, I'm part of along with Peter and um, we have four action teams and two of the action teams, uh, you can see the flyer in the back, but uh, we have healthy spaces and active communities. And because of the pandemic, a lot of the healthy spaces, they're talking about moving outside. And so there's talk about combining them into one. Um, but I think that there's definitely gonna be overlap and also like good potential for collaboration across active communities and potentially healthy spaces and whatever we decide to name this. Yeah, and, and that's super exciting because, um, so there, there's tons of sort of programmatic crossover between the work that we're doing and Move to Health Equity is, and also the groups that are involved are kind of following both sets of work. So that's like the Boys and Girls Club, that's like the UVA Cancer Center, that's the, the YMCA, um, a, a lot of those folks are sort of auditing our work and, and auditing in their academic sense. They're like listening. I include them on, on the emails and stuff. And I, I think there's lots of opportunities to, um, to work even more broadly than this group is. So that's super exciting. Um, who else has, has a, um, a quick update? Hey, Peter, um, just mentioning this, um, I, think, I think you saw this notice as well, but folks might be interested in this new um, grant funding program that the Virginia Outdoors Foundation has put together called their Go Fund, um, their Get Outdoors Fund. Um, they, the board approved it at their last board meeting, and um, it's really designed to be smaller scale, it's not like acquisition dollars, it's you know up to $25,000, but to help organizations with um, sort of planning and implementation of uh, projects that are gonna address equity in areas of helping give people access to the outdoors. Um, they describe it in their narrative a little bit better than I did. Um, just then, but you know, that's the notion is to sort of look at underserved communities across the Commonwealth and help give people in those communities access to outdoors. And they're acknowledging that um, there isn't always funding to kind of plan and develop those types of projects. Um, so this is money that's geared towards that. The, the Virginia Outdoors Foundation Board dedicated um, $250,000 toward that and um, then capped it. So they're trying to distribute this, right? So they're trying to kind of put this around the state and they're gonna, um, so their maximum each, I think the maximum grant they set was $25,000. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, and I hope it becomes a, an annual funding program for them. This is the first time they've done it and it's brand new. Um, so if folks have some ideas and where to, where to, um, to look for funding, I would encourage you to look at that. And maybe we can throw a link in the chat. I'll see if I can find one for folks. Um, thanks, Rex. Uh, a number of people have, have separately reached out to me and said, yeah, we should pursue that, you know, and the answer is, is yes, we, we should do that. Um, uh, 
Um, Peter, we uh, we submitted our renewal application for our bicycle friendly business status at CCRI and uh, CCRI is our acronym. Our long name is Commonwealth Computer Research Inc. Incorporated. So um, I think there's an, a, a, an outside chance we can move up from bronze to silver, but I'm not really sure what the uh, criteria are. So we'll see. Um, thank you. And, and if you do get it, please um, uh, brag that around town and try to shame other businesses into joining you. Like PEC? For Consider example. Shame. Okay. Peter, I can try to provide a quick update. I didn't have any prepared remarks, but maybe just a uh, quick light update in terms of what the county's working on. Sure. Um, I mean, I can speak as the chief of parks planning. I really need to look at the parks proper, um, but work with Dan on the actual greenways and on connectivity issues with Kevin and Dan Bush. Um, and just for awareness, I don't know if any of this is news, but, um, you know, the county is continuing to work in the southern urban neighborhood part of the development area. Um, working with Stanley Martin to get a couple additional easements dedicated um, through Whittington and Oak Hill um, with the long range goal of connecting Biscuit Run up through some of those residential neighborhoods to like Azalea Park and Morse Creek and, and just kind of completing that loop in a sense. Um, I understand the discussions with some of the homeowners associations for the Biscuit Run connector greenway between Fifth Street Station and the park property at Biscuit Run. I understand those have kind of uh, picked up a little bit in this fall. So I think that's really good news. Um, honestly, a lot of, of some of the news relate to Crozet right now. There's just some movement and some dedications going on um, along a couple of different greenways out there. So that's, that's exciting, although that's not necessarily a direct correlation with maybe what this group's focus is in terms of urban connectivity. Um, um, but I think that's kind of a, a quick and dirty update. Some of the other stuff you all know about with the Rivanna River bridge crossing study, you know, other things going on at Woolen Mills, but um, nothing really new to report in those particular instances. Thank you for that awesome segue, Tim. I was hoping, Jessica is on the meeting, but she, she might have had to bounce out. I was hoping that she would share this update that I'm going to share, and then um, it'll be time for Heather. But um, so the Rivanna River um, Corridor study is going on, and they're having a, a series of stakeholder meetings. The next one is uh, this Thursday evening, and I'll share a link for that in the chat. And also, um, you would have seen this hopefully in my last email that the um, uh, there will be a community meeting about a potential pedestrian bridge over the Rivanna. Oh, there you are, Jessica. Uh, share about your um, Rivanna River Bridge meeting, the time and how people find out about it. Sure, I was gonna let you finish, but that's all right. Um, so yes, it'll be uh, on November 12th at 6 p.m. There will be a virtual meeting discussing um, the feasibility study that was recently completed by VDOT looking at a bicycle, a potential bicycle and pedestrian crossing over the Rivanna River in the area of Riverview Park. Um, so that meeting will just be to talk about how that feasibility study went and um, if we were to move forward, what the next steps would look like. You don't need to register for it. So if you just want to go to um, the TJPDC website, we now have a bicycle and pedestrian transportation planning web page, and you can find um, the info for that meeting there. That's it. Uh, thanks, Jessica. Super appreciate it. And um, speaking of rivers, um, we have one of my favorite um, colleagues and uh, I, I must confess a bit of hero of mine is Heather Burr from the Friends of the 
lower Appomattox River. Um, thank you so much for coming all the way across the Commonwealth to get here. Um, uh, why don't you take it away and tell us what you're up to um, in your neck of the woods um, and specifically how it relates to collective action and um, connecting communities to nature and the river. Good. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for having me. Um, good to be here. Before I get started, I kind of want to see a show of hands or a, a chat. Um, if, if people know where the Tri-Cities are or the Appomattox River, if I'm talking, I have the map to show you, but um, or if anyone's been to the Appomattox River before, I know there's, a, there's one person on the call, I know at least, but um, are you guys familiar? Yeah, a couple of people are familiar. Good. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, Heather, I forgot to promote you to co-host. You're co-host now. You should be able to share. Um, so I'm going to share with you, you know, some some maps and, and a little bit of update of what we're doing. Can you guys all see that? Yes. Okay. Um, computer's being slow. Um, well, while my computer is a little frozen, here we go. Um, so, so yeah, so I'm with the Friends of the Lower Appomattox River. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, what we do and, and where we are operating. And like Peter said, we are um, just like PEC, all about collective impact. And Peter and I have actually presented together at conferences because um, even though we're in different regions, our work is, is very similar. And I must say, I you know love the Charlottesville area and, and have a lot of friends and miss traveling out there right now and, and being out there. So um, this first image I just want to point out because we're going to talk about later is the Hopewell River Walk. It's one of our newest facilities um, open on the river um, in Hopewell and it's getting um, tons of uh, visitors. It's only a third of a mile long right now. Um, and it actually got a Governor's um, Excellence uh, Award and we're really proud of this asset for the community. Um, so this, you know, for those of you who don't know what Appomattox River is or the Tri-Cities, so we are about half an hour south of the city of Richmond off of I-95, and we're the cities of Petersburg, Colonial Heights, and Hopewell, as well as the counties of Chesterfield, Dinwiddie, and Prince George. Um, our river is on the fall line, just like Richmond, Petersburg is on the fall line, and really that is the whole reason our, our region exists, is that that river um, industry. And we have both rapids on our river, and then we also go to the tidal flat water. So it's a really interesting river to visit, um, and it um, offers both, you know, whitewater paddling as well as flat water paddling. Um, and so I am with a group called the Friends of the Lower Appomattox River. And this is our um, mission statement. So really it is about protecting the lower Appomattox River, but protecting it for everyone to enjoy. Um, and so we really like having that in partnership and for all to enjoy in our mission statement. It really is all about um, what we're about. And we're about both, um, you can see these pictures, we're both about a land trail and a water trail. So we're developing both a 25 mile greenway um, through the region as well as a blue way. Um, and of course, I don't need to cover this slide. This is everything that you guys know about how important it is to protect our uh, environment and all it can do for our region and quality of health. But a great picture just to show you some of the diversity of our river and some of those um, great landscapes we have. Uh, just to give you a little context, we are a very small organization. We're about 20 years old. We were founded, um, our local planning district commission did a study about the river in the late 90s and said that the river is important, it should be protected and enhanced. And out of that came our organization. And these are two of our founding board members who are still involved. So we really came um, as a grassroots organization. These gentlemen are both local to Petersburg and Hopewell, grew up there, served on city council and Rotary, right? So just super involved in the community. Um, and really got us started. And then there's two, two of us for staff. Um, I am the regional trails director and Wendy in the um, picture is our executive director. 
Um, Wendy's been on staff for about five years, and I've been two years on staff um, just this week. So, um, you know, we really are in that transition phase as an organization, you know, growing from that all volunteer uh, base to being a little more professional and um, in doing some, some different work. Um, but I did want to show you some of the awesome work that our volunteers did as an all-volunteer organization. Um, this is this top picture of standing in downtown Hopewell looking at the river. Of course, you can't see it. It's all covered with kudzu. And the bottom picture is what uh, City Park looks like now. It's cleared. It has this beautiful nature-inspired playground. Um, and it's also the, tr the trailhead for the river walk. Um, so, you know, really this was all started by volunteers, sweat equity, you know, making sure that everything was cleared, but then it you know, really came together in the end, the playground, um, you know, all of our industry and nonprofits and the Parks and Rec really came together. So if you haven't been to Hopewell, it's a great little day trip. Um, downtown Hopewell has some local restaurants and bakeries and coffee shops and this great trail, National Park, so great little day trip to make. Other work that we're so proud of um, from our volunteers days is are these bridges in Petersburg. We call them the Battersea Bridges. It's a series of two bridges that get you over the canal and the river. Um, and just really, really gorgeous. You're literally steps from downtown Petersburg and then you're just out in nature. Um, and you know, the river gets really flowing. And so sometimes it's so loud here, you can't even hear each other talk because it's just the rapids. It's a really great spot. Um, so from this work, so, uh, you know, our volunteers kind of did these individual projects here and there around the community. Um, but then we really saw the need for a master plan. So as we brought professional staff on, we um, worked with the community and developed a master plan for the entire region. And this work was funded by um, the Cameron Foundation, one of our local foundations in the Tri-Cities. And it really set the stage for the whole region for that land and water trail. Um, and it's adopted by our planning district commission in all six localities. Um, and so what it does is it establishes the route. So here's a picture of our 25 miles um, going through the, through the different communities. And it also sets um, some standards in, in park improvements for all, all six jurisdictions. So, you know, I think much like your work, you know, we're working with more than one jurisdiction. We want to make sure as people are on the system changing jurisdictions, you want to make sure they kind of have a similar look and feel as they move through that system. Um, what it also does is it sets this um, new sign package for the whole region. We developed this uh, logo, Aftermath River Trail logo, with the community during the process. Um, a lot of meetings and social media that come up with this logo. And we developed the sign package. Again, the sign plan is really interesting. Um, you know, it's all sets all the technical specifications. So any jurisdiction or partner can go produce the same signs. Um, they also, this sign you see has the, a house and it says Battersea. That bottom section of our sign can change for every single community. So as we move through a different neighborhood or a different part of town, we work with that community, develop a new logo for them and put that on the sign to get some personalization as we move through all of our jurisdictions. So we do have some signs up throughout the region. We're partnering with um, really our health partners have, have really come um, stepped up and started funding some signage. So we're excited to start seeing these in our community. Again, helping with that feel as you move through a region that you have that consistency on our trail system. And then, of course, you know, I don't have to tell you guys about partnerships. You have lots of partnerships um, in your region, but same thing, you know, we're really working cross-sector to make all this happen. Um, lots of, we have health co collaboration groups, just like I heard you guys talk about. Um, Rotary Club is just, you know, super for us. So lots of great partnerships to make this work become a reality. And then here's just a, a list of all of our partners, our six jurisdictions. I'm not sure if I mentioned we have um, national park sites uh, in our network, which is really interesting. And actually one of our trailheads will be partnering with uh, City Point National Park trail, trailhead site. So we actually have national park land. Um, and we also have Virginia State University. So we have 
uh, university literally on the riverfront and um, it's a historic black university and they also we partner with them they're on our board and we actually uh, have a lot of students doing research for us um, <clears throat> and helping with uh, you know trail research and data input and then of course just like PEC you know we we have a greater network than just our region and we uh, work with all the other state groups to make sure we're advocating for anything at the state level to, um, to help. And then the bottom picture we like to talk about, we even have international relationships. Um, we actually have a Dutch bridge designer who um, designed the Hub and a Ring, if you guys are familiar with that in the Netherlands, actually come to um, the Tri-Cities and do a workshop with us a couple of years ago. So really exciting to even have some Dutch uh, folks interested in, in our region. And then, uh, of course, because we are a river and environmental group, um, not just a biking and walking group, we, we promote a lot of stewardship and, and programming on the river. We have lots of partnerships to do cleanups um, and stormwater programs. And then we also host, um, not this fall, but every fall we usually host, we call the paddle or battle. Um, so I invite you guys to come to that. You can either do a fun 10 mile paddle or you can compete and you can uh, compete against a few people. Most people just do the fun, but a few people compete. Um, a lot of people come from Tidewater actually to do the event with these really sleek boats and um, it's really fun. It's a really fun event to have folks. We do breakfast and lunch and you should get about 100 paddlers out. So it's a really fun day. So we definitely promote, you know, being on the river and um, water safety as well as our trail work. Um, and this is some other, this is on our website, so you guys are welcome to find it there. Um, or we also um, have this, it's a paper version, so I can mail it to anyone who would like it. Um, but this is our updated trail map guide that we have out right now, showing all the current sections of trails. So I mentioned we have a 25 mile plan. We have about seven to 10 miles on the ground in different sections. Um, and two miles is really about the longest section we have right now. Um, but our goal is to get a seven mile continuous section. And that's what we're working actively not now on is to get seven miles completed um, all together in a row. Uh, the other thing I think you guys would be interested in hearing about, and I'm sure you've, you've heard about, is the Ashland to Petersburg or the Fall Line Trail, which is a uh, just new proposed trail from Ashland to Petersburg. So Petersburg is in the middle of the map right here. Um, and so that uh, north-south trail will be intersecting right in the middle of our, you know, basically east-west trail. So two major, um, you know, trail systems in central Virginia intersecting right there at Virginia State University. So really excited to have that opportunity too. So please let me know if you um, are interested in this map or you know, definitely you can go online and find it. We are in the middle of an update for our website and we hope to be having um, that come out by the end of the year where we have an online interactive mapper available for folks to see where all the trailheads are and where all the trails are. And it would be you know, live with you in the field, geo-reference where you can see exactly where you are on the ground. So I'm hoping to get that out by the end of the year. And I think that is all I have. Here's my contact information. Um, and I'm happy to you know, answer any questions or, or talk more about our efforts. Um, you know, one thing I didn't really talk about is that um, this region is uh, a pretty vulnerable region. Um, we are one of, well, we are, Petersburg is the highest high obesity locality in the entire state. Um, and we rank, you know, really at the lowest in health outcomes and health indicators, the whole region kind of ranks in the bottom. So, so for us, this work, you know, it's, it's about preserving the riverfront and it's about, you know, great environment, but it's also about really providing uh, something for the community um, we have also very low car ownership, very, you know, high poverty rate. So for us, it's also about equity and it's about, you know, developing resources for the community. Um, that's a really big part of our work. So, um, so thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to answer any questions or go back to any slides if anyone's interested. Um, and definitely would invite you guys to come out sometime and, and visit. And if you want any 
more information on you know what trailheads are best for biking or walking, feel free to drop me an email and let me know. Thanks, Heather. That was awesome. Um, so, um, as I um, as I said at the top of the meeting, this meeting actually is a room of equals. And so um, I would invite anybody to um, ask Heather questions. She specifically set up her presentation to allow more time for conversation. Um, so um, uh, let's hear your questions. I have a few um, jotted down, but I'd like to hear from you guys. You have. Uh, I had it. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you have a, a an estimated timeline for completion of the whole twenty five miles? A great question. We get all the time. Um, you know, we're we're aiming for ten years. Um, it's kind of our our goal right now. Um, the Hope Well section I didn't mention will be. Um, complete in 2021. Actually, Hopewell, a lot of theirs will be actually on-road bike lanes and sidewalk system because so much of the Hopewell riverfront is privately developed already here at the come off. So, um, you know, Hopewell will be done by 2021, we're estimating. Um, and we have other pieces kind of coming, um, coming along. We really don't have much land acquisition, just a couple of little pieces. A lot of it's already owned in public ownership. So, you know, our estimate's 10 years. I mean, we'll, we'll see, but that's what we're hoping. Um, I, I saw Paula's hand. I, I would like to quickly ask you a follow on because I had that on my list of jotted down. So do you have some kind of mechanism to keep that pace moving or is the whole thing aspirational and, and the localities are playing nice? Yeah, well, I, like I mentioned, we're, we're growing and changing as an organization, you know, so, so really going from the all volunteer base um, without a real strong plan, right? A lot of our volunteers just, you know, did pet projects as they were, they came. So really our, our plan strategic plan is, you know, guiding us. Um, and, you know, we're starting to make our systems more robust, uh, uh, the organization itself, right? So we're, you know, getting more robust fundraising software and, you know, getting all of our ducks in a row, as you will, you know. So I think as we continue to, to, to strengthen as an organization, then we can, you know, really keep up that pace. Um, we do have a great partnership with all the localities um, I don't think Peter mentioned I was a planner in the region before I went to the nonprofit, you know, and, and Wendy also has been in the region a long time. So we, we really have a lot of long-standing relationships um, already in place that help. But yeah, no, we're, we're just, um, yeah, just trying to go with the momentum that we have now and build like, you know, as, as other communities here that Hopewell has their piece done, you know, we're really hoping other communities will, will step up and kind of they're all kind of doing their, their piece. Hi, Amanda. Uh, it, this is Paula Figgett with the UVA Foundation. We uh, collectively, along with Virginia Tech and some other universities, built out CCAM in the Petersburg area. And now that Rolls Royce is pulling out of that uh, area, and I think CCAM will probably follow suit with Rolls Royce. Um, do you have other people that are able to sponsor or support your mission as far as active communities? Because I, I know that it's needed. Yeah, yeah, and that's something we actually, um, we're building on. Yeah, we, we really know we're probably not tapping into everyone, you know, as we are. So we're definitely kind of building a fundraising strategy and, and really trying to, to grow that and be more robust in that. Um, but you're right, yeah, the region has some challenges, you're right, around Rolls Royce, and, um, but yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting being so close to Richmond, but so far, you know, like Absolutely. there's a lot of foundations yeah. that don't quite reach to us, right? So it's like we're, we're, we're close enough, but too far to really, you know, leverage some Richmond, so. I, I think 
to add that tourism, that the trail systems, I think that's going to be very helpful. Absolutely. And we have um, Petersburg Area Regional Tourism. So we have a, a, an arm, you know, if you will, in our region. And, you know, they, they're they seeing, you know, they've, they've traditionally been a very Civil War and barbecue focused um, right, right. tourism group. And I think they're seeing, oh, yeah, people want to be outside. And, you know, we're getting the breweries and the wineries in the region. You know, so I think our tourism group is kind of starting to see that shift, too. Yeah. Is there is a move to actually connect to Richmond in some way? Yeah, so we have two two ways to connect to Richmond. So um, the Capitol Trail is just across the James River, if you guys can picture that. Um, and really the Charles City portion of the trail isn't that far. Um, so we actually have a study in place um, about how we would connect to them through uh, Charles City and um, Prince George County. Um, we think in the short term that would be a shuttle, um, but we know a lot of people who are on the Capitol Trail actually come to the Tri-Cities to stay. It's closer to, to spend the night in the Tri-Cities than it is to go to Richmond. Um, so we kind of have that partnership. And then the Ashland to Petersburg Trail, or the Fall Line Trail I mentioned, would be a north-south, more of a direct connection, you know, Chesterfield County and then City of Richmond. So that trail right. would connect in. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Someone in the chat has a question about cost estimate. And, uh, you know, we're, we're at that kind of million dollar per mile mark that I think you guys have heard with the Capitol Trail and, and other trails, um, you know, with land acquisition or right away, we are looking at our main trail to be a shared use path style. So we're looking at that 10 foot wide paved um, again, you know, with our community's transportation needs and health needs, we really feel like something accessible is very important to this community. We still want to have some, you know, other rustic trails that would be spurs off of that, but we, we really feel like that main spine is important. And we also have some important bridge crossings we need to make um, to have some pedestrian and bicycle bridges. Uh, again, a lot of the uh, jobs are on the north side of the river and, and so again getting people over to jobs and then with Virginia State University we have a large student population um, who likes to come to Petersburg staff also and, and so again making some dedicated pedestrian bridges is, is an important part of our plan. Um, on the topic of bridges um, I, you're, where you live, the flood plain is just vast and, and wide. Um, how, how are you, how are you even able to do pedestrian bridges without them being this enormous, you know, high bridge that, that doesn't implicate the flood plain at all? Well, actually, you know, uh because we're on the fall line, so so really half of our system kind of has that flood plane you're thinking of and half of it doesn't. Uh, interesting. So, so yeah, so we really kind of do change. Um, but we're our most of our bridges are actually going to be using uh, existing historic train infrastructure. So we, we already really have some trestles in place and we're really gonna be taking advantage of what was already there for most of our bridges. Who else? Who else has questions? Don't let me hog her up. I know Peter asked me, I didn't really talk about collective impact directly in the presentation, but um, really collective impact is the model um, that we're using. And we really started some intentional collective impact work right before COVID. Um, we already were bringing the region together once a year to you know update on the state of the trail. Um, we really were going to do a little more intentional work, some, some field trips together. Um, of course, that all got postponed. Uh, but, you know, we really try to bring together those, those diverse fields that really all will be, have impacts or, or be impacted by the trail. So, you know, we bring together planning, environmental, police, parks and rec, tourism, economic development. 
um, and then as well as all of our state and um, health partners. So, you know, I, I kind of joke, you know, I used to work for one locality and now I'm working across six different localities. And so sometimes you feel like you're doing your work six different times because every time you reach out to a Parks and Rec director, you know, I reach out to all of them. Um, but, you know, for us, it really is about, you know, relationships and, and keeping everyone informed. You know, we, we really see Fuller's role of just, you know, kind of, kind of just overseeing that because we really do want to have a regional system and feel. Um, but, you know, each locality really is building their own section. We're just kind of providing that guidance and, you know, making sure the two jurisdictions at, at a boundary are talking or, you know, kind of giving that bigger picture view to, to the region. Is there a, um, like a canal, an old canal system or a railroad along the upper Appomattox that could lend itself to uh, for, uh, future expansion, maybe to Farmville or up, or at least upstream? Mm. Yeah, so, so I'm only familiar with it to, to my region, but yeah, so definitely that upper Appomattox has, has a very intact canal system still um, in, in our section. Uh, you know, then after you go further up, you hit Lake Chesden. So our, our boundary is that Lake Chesden. So I'm not really sure what happens when you get to Lake Chesden, what happens west from there. Honestly, I'm not sure if that's all gone, you know, but any infrastructure is gone. But um, we're definitely using a lot of that canal and towpath as part of our system in, in that area. Um, there is a Friends of the Appomattox River. I don't really know them, but in Farmville, they're pretty small and all volunteer based. Um, but we do need to reach out to them and, and, and make sure we are coordinating any efforts. Um, so, Heather, we're, we're, I don't know if you uh, were on the call when I mentioned it, but Charlottesville and Albemarle are collectively working on a Rivanna River corridor study for, um, I, I don't know, a, a couple miles for the Charlottesville adjacent portion of the Rivanna River. And, and in the, um, the presentation, it, it seems as if there's a tension between providing access and having people use the river for fun and having the river be a serene place where people can be a, at sort of total peace and nature is undisturbed. How, how would you recommend that we walk that balance between those two um, competing almost issues? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're actually doing a, a Blue Wave plan um, in more detail now. So the other master plan I showed you is really focused on the land. So we're doing a Blue Wave plan with a BC graduate student this year who's um, actually a local Petersburg resident and doing a really great job. There's um, a new uh, river management society, RMS. They have a new river planning access guide right now that's really great. That just came out. Um, and something that we're finding in research with our intern is that, um, you know, there really is, there's not, a, there's not a magic formula to how many access points you have, right? But, but there is, you know, if you, too many access points does encourage too many short kind of party-like trips, right? So, so you, you don't want to have your access points so far apart that folks can't do a day-long float, but you don't want them too close that you're encouraging um, too much use. Yeah, so it's def definitely a, a balance. And so, you know, in our region, each jurisdiction has made access points uh, and has not ever coordinated on a regional scale. So each jurisdiction just has, you know, new launches here and there. Um, and our intern has done research and we really feel like we probably have the right number um, that they need. They need some better signage and some, some more um, work. But, you know, yeah, I don't think there's a magic, there's a magic number, but there's definitely research out there about, about how many is too many, you know? So I think, yeah, it's a great point and we're, um, we definitely have some areas that, I mean, our area is probably slightly different. And Peter, you've been there. You know, we have one of 25 miles. You have areas that are very rural in nature and, and just not many houses even around the trail. 
And then we have areas like in Colonial Heights and Petersburg that feel very urban. So I feel like we kind of have a natural progression, you know, kind of, of where you know where you could be alone and where you know you could, you know, be around people. And you guys are probably a little different than that. You probably have a little more population. So, um, but yeah, there's the, the new RMS River Access Guide I would definitely recommend. And they actually talk about even the spiritual aspect of the river, the communities, and how it's important. You know, some churches use rivers or Native Americans, and even, you know, they kind of go into that aspect of providing river access. So it's very interesting. What about um, uh, bring it, you obviously, well, it, maybe it isn't, maybe I shouldn't say obviously, but it seems like you can't really bring the river to the people. We, you need to bring people to the river. What, what are you guys doing is like connecting upland communities to the river? Yeah, so, so we're, an interesting group because I think a lot of groups, I guess, would be more watershed focused. You know, we re we really are river corridor focused um, in our our work right now. Um, but our master plan did identify um, access points to the river trail, um, and again, really with our work with our health partners, we're identifying those um, routes from the neighborhoods and community to the river. Um, and starting to put signs up that, you know, give you walk times or bike times. Um, so really for us, you know, right now it's identifying routes and, and signage and making sure people have, you know, good ways to bike and walk to the river, not just drive to the river. Um, you know, in our community, it's, it's very common to find people who have grown up and lived there all their lives and never been to the river. Um, you know, our river was industrial at one point in time. Uh, someone said we have canals and railroad, railroad tracks, um, so a lot of barriers to even get to the river. So um, even for folks that grew up there, it's not really natural or habitual to go to the river, maybe to fish, you know, but, but not really to go recreate. So um, yeah, yeah, we're, but we're, you know, again, being intentional with signage and, and making some routes so you could, you could bike or walk to get to the riverfront. Who would like to ask Heather the last question but, but before we adjourn and everybody go have dinner and Heather drive all the way back <laughs> from Charlottesville? I wish I really was in Charlottesville. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have you down here um, soon. And we should make our own field trip down there when field trips are a thing again. Absolutely. Yes, thank you, Heather, for doing that, for coming and talking to us. Thank you, Heather. I'm looking forward to uh, coming down to your trails. Good, thanks. If anyone wants, like I said, feel free to email me if you want any advice on, you know, a trailhead or, you know, anything like that. I'm happy to, happy to answer any questions offline. Uh, super. Um, could you please put your contact info in the chat? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I'll ask the parting question um, uh, for you. So um, we are going through this um, this river um master planning process um if we should be thinking about just one thing or if we should be making sure we really get just one thing right what would you suggest that that we should be you know doing now in our planning process so we don't wish later oh we wish we had talked to the community about such and such question yeah you know i think um 
I think branding is interesting and something we maybe don't think about as much in our, you know, our work as natural resource or, or bike head planners. Um, but I think ultimately branding is important. And I think, you know, with friends of the lower Appalachian, you know, we've had a couple different names, but the trail is going to be named. Um, and people in our community call this the Folar Trail. And I'm very adamant that it's not our trail, it's the Appalachian River Trail and it's the community's trail. Um, and that's something with the collective impact work that I'm really working on is, you know, kind of changing that language, trying to change that language and, and making sure everyone really feels ownership around it. And I think branding is um, a really important component of that. And I think, you know, from the beginning, if we had that logo and that, that trail name kind of, you know, more solidified years and years ago, I think it would have been easier. Um, we kind of made that name change when we made the master plan change. I think we were the Lower Appomattox River Heritage Trail or it's something very long. And when we started, you know, making the signage and really having discussions, we thought, you know, you know what is the trail really and what does it need to be? And I know the Fall Line Trail, I was on that committee um, that was part of that branding and, and naming process. And they just announced that with the governor this week, um, a brand and a name. And I do think ultimately for the public to really understand and, and to get to something, I think that branding is important, especially on a regional level. So I think that would be, um, you know, not really a natural resource answer or a, a planning answer, but I think something that is important for the public um, ultimately to be able to get behind a project and, and really feel like, you know, they understand the project. I think having that simple message is important. Thank you. That That's a, a great, um, a great thing. I, so as, as I was talking to Kat Anthony, you know, like two weeks ago about the um, Ashland to Petersburg trail and, and she was very adamant that, you know, there, there's a process to get to that name and and that um, uh, having the community really own that name is so important because it, it says, you know, what it is. Um, and you could exclude certain people or you could pull people in or um, so uh, along the Rivanna River, um, for example, there's a, a very significant, uh, or there was a very significant Monacan community. So, so there's this idea of, of having some kind of um, Monacan inflection to the name, but but you can't make something about people without them in the process. So that that's you know, as you pull these layers, it means you know more and more conversations and. I was wondering where the Ashland to Petersburg trail would go for that reason, because there's so many, you know, deep histories you could get into. And it's interesting that they landed on the fall line, which is kind of a, a little bit superficial, a little descriptive, but everybody owns it the same amount. Um, yeah, 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 that was, you know, we were, we were part of that process and, um, yeah, the, the, for those of you who don't know, the Ashland, the Petersburg Trail goes through like nine jurisdictions. And so all the jurisdictions in the middle were like, no way, we're not going to have a trail name that mentions two of them, you know. So, um, you know, we went through a, a very iterative process with that trail name, of, you know, brainstorming what's with the commonality between the nine, you know, and so we just, it was, it was an interesting process to go through. And, you know, the fall line is the geography of, of our region. Um, and I think people thought, you know, the word line, you know, we also have a lot of rail lines and that they thought it could, you know, play in a couple of different words, but yeah, yeah, kind of an interesting process to get there. Super, well, thank you. Um, any, anybody have closing questions for Heather? Thank you all so much. Um, thank you, Heather, for um, putting time in to prepare and come and, and take time away from everything you're doing. Um, great to, great to, like we said, network across the state and definitely I'll come see you guys. Someday. Yeah, hope, 
hope to see you soon. Um, maybe in the spring, uh, we'll be doing, we'll figure out a way to do stuff socially distant. So, yeah. Um, and to the rest of you, thank you for allocating a two hour chunk of your day um, for our collective work. Thank you so much. It, it was great. And um, uh, I'll be back in touch with notes and next steps and when the next meeting is going to be. Um, in the meantime, you know where to, to find each other and where to find me. And have a great rest of the evening. <laughs>